Good morning, welcome to the FTS bet slip on Wednesday the 15th of January. Uh, no good at Oxford last night, I think the weather beat us up, uh, I'm not making excuses but I don't think it was very pleasant there um, and they went off for a pitch inspection um, but it is what it is, if you do them all you'll be okay over time but if you're just diving in and out there is the chance you're going to hit the losers. Um, no football today and no horses, um, I'm going to keep an eye on the horses as well because the weather's been pretty piss poor, another, um, another cancellation today so we'll just take it easy for a bit and hope that things pick up. Um, I do have some golfers at the end of this podcast. Uh, good story Esther, I think some of you enjoyed it, um, quite entertaining obviously and I will, uh, I'll get to part two of that next week. Um, right, so yesterday um, I um, got you to write down your lifetime goals um, and your yearly goals. Um, and the reason, I don't know whether people did it or not, one guy emailed me and I'm not asking you to email me. Um, I'm just saying that one guy did, um, and he did suggest I do mine, and I will put mine on uh, the forum or somewhere over the next couple of days when I get a chance. Um, and the reason I get you to, to to write things down is, ultimately, it doesn't matter what you choose to do in life, um, everything comes down to you and what you do. There is an absolute wealth of information on every topic these days. You know, if you take weight loss, there's not another book that could be written on weight loss that would make any difference to anybody. All the information you could possibly need is out there. Um, betting, there's never going to be a new miracle loophole now on the exchange. Most of the information is out there. Self-help, there's so many self-help books. I know people who read hundreds of them. Um, ultimately, you can read all the books you like, doesn't matter what the topic. Unless you actually start to take control and do things, nothing changes. And it's not just doing it once, it's doing it every single day. The reason I'm good at what I do, and I go back to when I lost 20 grand in October in a week, is I get up and do the same thing every day. I don't focus on what's happening on any one particular day. I try and do the right things every day. I have a wonderful wife, two good kids, great kids. You know, I know uh, I've got great kids, great kids. I've got the best kids. Um, <laughs> I know I don't. Um, I know I use them as uh, as jolly ups at times for stories, and none of the stories are false. They're all true. Uh, my boy's obviously had his own sort of mental health issues, but I've got good kids. Um, I've had a couple of dogs. I've had people, not brothers, sisters, mother, um, who've relied on me over time. Um, and whilst I can be a bit of a clown and a bit of a class joker and I like people to have a good time, I think very much that life is for living. When it comes down to the serious side of where do I want to get to, what do I want to do, it's taking little steps but doing it every single day. I'll give you an example where I fell down. I did keto. I'm very, I'm not conscious of my weight, but as you get older, particularly I had heart trouble, I've got a sort of weight in mind that I don't want to exceed. I don't like being over 13 stone. So I was over 13 stone, so I went on that keto. Brilliant, I got down to 12 stone. As soon as I stopped the keto, I started doing all my bad habits, put the weight back on. Unless I keep doing it, that is what's going to happen. And it doesn't mean that you have to be strict keto every day, but you want, we just fall back into our bad habits and things without even thinking. The minute you stop doing the little things, um, it soon escalates. So the minute I started letting bread, potatoes, pasta back in, that led to biscuits and sweets and crisps and things over Christmas. Um, I could have a little bit of bread and pasta. What I can't have is all the sweets and crisps and biscuits and snacks, you know, and stuff like that. But one leads to the other because I'm not taking those steps of being disciplined. It ends. Um, so when you look at the world we live in and, and the goals now, how do we go about achieving them? Um, You've got to cut out noise. We live in now. I don't care what anybody says, and social media may have benefits. I I find very few in them, and I realise I'm a very black and white person. But I think 
that's what works for me and I think there's too much fannying around in the world either you're doing something or you're not doing it you know and you know I go on about TV I get people the reason I'm so anti TV is I get people tell me I don't have time didn't have time to do that and then they're talking about how they fucking watch Love Island and all that which serves no purpose in your life whatsoever it's a routine that people get into I don't sit side by side with my wife just staring at a screen of TV I decide that if I'm not punting trading, we're going to live life, we're going to do things. Next week we're going off, we're going to go to Beverly Hills, stay in a nice hotel, we're going to go to Torrey Pines, watch the golf. It's not all about the money, it's about enjoying yourself because there's things in England that I do with her. Um, Go to Scotland, walk around Loch Lomond, thoroughly enjoyed it. Didn't cost anything to walk around Loch Lomond, get up, go for a nice walk. Everybody's got parks, forests, things near them. Spend time with your family walking. Um, But we live in this world of social media, it's changed the world. Genie's not going back in the bottle, um, based on a load of lies and falsehoods, based on a load of negativity, and based on a lot of vitriol. And if you don't believe me, just open and look at some of the tweets and replies, even to basic things about football, and the vitriol between fans and what they say, because they can do it. Look Look at how certain punter treats people, a certain tipster that a lot of you know, how he treats people day in, day out. Uh, no need for it, wouldn't do it to me in the street, wouldn't do it to you in the street, but that's what social media allows. Um, And in punting wise there's that negativity, can't win, stats don't work, you must beat the closing line, lay the draw is dead, Poisson doesn't work, in play can't be beat, in play horses doesn't work, scalp in pre-race no longer works, you can't beat courtsiders, well you can't do anything, we might as well all fucking pack up and go home. Um, It is very, very negative. and you don't focus on what you're doing or how to do it. You give credence to these people. You give credence to people you've never met. They know little about a lot of things. But because you think they're better than you, because they think they may be an academic or whatever, and they happen to have written a book, whatever it may be, or or do a blog, you think that they're better than you. They're not. And that is the first step to success. The first step is to accept that and focus on you. And the second step is to take little steps to reach your goals every day so you've all written some goals down now how are you going to reach them and what I do from those goals so let's take my yearly goals I then write down a list and it can be as long as you like it can be one two three to ten one to three to fifteen of what is needed to achieve those goals what do I need to change do I need to get healthier what and then what does that involve but I write broad headlines got to get fitter um, got to manage for me time management is a bad thing because I try and do so much in a day get my time management sorted out um, being nice to people so that you're in a better frame of mind it could be anything whatever it may be um, if you you know like me quite a fiery personality I try not to fire up to people there's it's whatever you may feel um, if you're bad at managing money that may be something right I've got to learn to manage money better Um, so there's so many things um, you know if you're you're badly disciplined at gambling that'd be one improve my discipline so in effect writing down broad brushstroke headlines now of what um, what you need to do avoid problem um, you know just punting on on basic things if we look at it from gambling avoid punting when drinking perhaps cut down drinking overall may be a thing um as i say eating healthily um perhaps not i don't know you might be prone to when you're on bet 365 going in the casino bit not going on that so writing those down and then taking then prioritize those right what what ones are really good what ones are really bad prioritize them and then i'll start talking about next week how you then go about implementing them and it is doing little things every day but doing the same the thing is to keep doing it as opposed to not keep doing it and that's the problem with most people they all start off with great intentions I speak to so many people particularly this time of year I'm doing it this year and I'm really giving it a go that's what I want and then you get to February and say oh no I gave yeah, stop. I gave up on that I had a couple of losers or whatever it may. but it doesn't matter just gambling it's your whole life I think you tend to find if you improve other areas of your life you'll actually find the gambling side improves because it's a similar approach to everything um, I'm very conscious of having good relationships with the people I like and, and my family I don't have a lot of friends which you probably doesn't surprise you but I don't want a lot of friends because I think a lot of people are fucking idiots and I don't want them around me but the people I really value and like I spend a lot of time building those relationships 
because I like the fact that if I have got an issue, if I am having a bad time, I've got people that I can go to and talk about it and they understand me. That's why I'm quite open. Um, I don't do all the bullshit and BS and try and pretend to be something I'm not. I am exactly what I am and I, and I present myself as I am and if people don't like me, they don't like my swearing, they don't like my political views, um, whatever it may be, no problem, fuck off, I'm not for you. That's It's as simple as that, it really is. I'm not going to spend my time trying to win you over because I've got no fucking interest in you and you've got no interest in me, so a lot of falsehood. And I've never really got that I want to be liked thing. You know, I love to be liked. I've got a friend of mine, lovely girl, but she just wants everyone to like her and she gets really upset if people don't. It's impossible to make everybody like you. Focus on what you can do. So you've got your goals. So now write down what steps you believe that you think you need to achieve those goals. Um, and then uh, I won't do it tomorrow, but next week I'll talk a bit more about those. I'll give you the second part of the story of my daughter. And I'll also another one came to me yesterday. I'll talk to you about when I got punched in the face over a set of car keys, which most of you will enjoy. Um, and somebody said to me, how do you have so much stories? Do you make them up? I don't make them up. I have so much stories because I don't sit in front of a fucking TV dumb and that. I've gone out and tried to make the most of my life. It doesn't matter what it is. You know, Paul will tell you, Sugsy. If you speak to him on Twitter, Paul says to me, he's only known me a short period of time, but we now spend quite a bit of time together going to the football. He said, I do things with you and experiences that I would never have. Um, and it just might just be small things, but they're entertaining and they're funny. That's why I have stories, because I put myself out there. I am quite an outgoing guy with things like that. I don't sit watching 24 fucking episodes of something on Netflix, because it's dull as dishwater and it's shite. Um, right. Crack on, have a lovely day. Oh, the golf, nearly forgot, see? Uh, right, I've backed four golfers. I've backed two in Abu Dhabi. Eric Van Ruin at 50 and George Coetzee at 100. So Eric Van Ruin at 50, George Coetzee at 100. And I have backed in the American Express, um, which will be a birdie fest, this will be. Uh, Matthew Wolf at 46. And Philly Mickelson, which may be my only bet I have him on this year. I'm going to see how he starts the year, but I think he's been working hard and he's going to come out. He's a birdie maker. I think he's going to come out wanting to make a bit of a point this year. Uh, so I couldn't resist the price of 55 on Philly Mick. He's currently 50, but um, I'd take the 50 if you can't get the 55. Um, right, that's it from me. I will be back with you all tomorrow morning.